This is a tutorial for Unreal Editor 2.5 for Unreal Tournament 2004. In this video, we will add a particle emitter. Before we begin, I should warn you that adding an emitter to your map will take some time because you will want to experiment with all of the different types of variables that you can control. So the first thing we're going to do before we start the emitter is to turn on the real-time preview dynamic light mode so that as we configure the emitter you're going to see the changes right away so here i have my room again it's 1024 by 1024 i'm using the texture set abaddon architecture because this is a teleporter static mesh from the package that's called abaddon hardware so this sort of fits the theme and imagine if you will that i have a teleporter here. Now this tutorial is not going to cover teleporters because I've already done it with my UT99 videos and today we're just going to focus on having a cool particle effect here that uh, will look like a teleporter of some sort. So you come up here to the actor class browser and under actor you will see a whole category called emitter and there's a whole bunch that are ready made but we're going to just simply take the basic one and that's this one here. So minimize that. Right click, add emitter, and it looks like this. And for now, I'll leave it here, but ultimately we're going to move it over here into the teleporter base. So the very first thing you need to do is to choose what type of emitter this is. So you click on it so that it's green. Right click, choose properties. And under emitter, you open up this plus sign, and there are no emitters so far. Keep in mind that you can have multiple emitters, but I'm only going to show one in this video. You click on add, and here you have to choose the type that it is. The most common being sprite emitter, but feel free to experiment with this. So now that you have a sprite emitter, you can click on new, and this is going to open up a whole bunch of variables that you can control. So let me just pull back a little bit and as you can see right now this texture is just a default texture that's why it looks so bad. So I would say that the very first thing you want to do is come into texture and you want this to be translucent so meaning you want some transparency to this and here's the part that we need to change. So you open up your texture browser and conveniently, when you go to File Open, conveniently there is actually a package and that's called Emitter Textures. So click on that one. And these are going to be little particles that are going to come out of the emitter. So I'm just going to take any one of these ones, let's say this one. Then under Texture, Texture, click Use. And there you can see. So this will be the particle that's going to be coming out of that emitter, but as you can see, it's much too large. So the second thing we will do will be go into size, and here where it says start size range, you're going to change these values here. Here, as you can see, they're 100 by 100, which is much too big. So let's bring it down to 20 and then the minimum would be let's say 5. Since we have uniform size equals true it means we don't need to worry about the other y and z ranges simply the x will do. Now the next thing we need to do is have them move because right now there's just one static particle. So you come down to velocity and you go to start velocity range which is here let's just put the Z axis because that means that the particles will go upwards let's try 30 and 20 
So as you can see, it's moving upwards because these are positive numbers on the z-axis. And they're different sizes because we gave a little bit of variation in the size. And there's also a little bit of variation in the velocity. So this is not very exciting because all you have is just some particles shooting in a straight line from here. There's no randomness to it. So now the next thing we want to do is create sort of a volume here where it's going to give some randomness to the particles as they come out. So here you need to go to location. The first thing you need to do is look at this start location shape. Let's keep it at box for now, but you can see that there are other choices that you can choose from. And what this box means that you can imagine there's like a box on the floor and that's going to be the 3D shape within which these particles are going to come out. So now you need to change the dimensions of that box. So you go to start location range and we're on the X and Y plane here, so you just need to f adjust X and the Y. Let's just for now go 20 by minus 20. And then same thing for the Y. So now you're seeing some variation in where the particles are coming from. The next thing that we need to fix is you can see how because we just have a box, the particles tend to just simply disappear and it would look a lot better if they faded in and faded out. So let's go to fading, fading in, let's make that true. And then the fade in time is going to be how much time it takes for them to appear. So let's take it very short, let's say 0.2. And we're going to do the same thing for fading out. And for now, let's just make it three so that after three seconds, they will slowly fade out like that. So they don't pop out. Now, because we've covered the fading, it's related to the time. So we need to change the time as well. And here, as you can see, the time is four seconds so let's just make a, a little bit of variation here and what that means is each of these particles will live somewhere between 3.5 and four seconds which is fine because the fading starts at three the next thing we want to do is we can adjust the colors so you come up here to colors and as you can see here, there's something called a color scale. So let's add one. And here you start, you can pick the color that it starts off with. So let's, you click on this, like so. So let's say it starts with a reddish color. And relative time is, be, is a number between zero and one, zero being the beginning and one being the end. So this one is the starting color. Then we add, need to add another one. So add another one. Again, click on this, pick a color, and let's say it ends up at yellow. And then this will be at the end, so let's make this a one. So we have it starting off as red and then changing to yellow and then finally you have to make this true. Use color scale equals true. So the particles are fading in. They're starting off as red and then slowly transferring to yellow. Next, we want to change the sizing scale here and you'll need to add one. So this works similar to the way the color works in that we want a size at the beginning, let's say, I don't know, three. And at the beginning, it's going to be big. So at three and then add another one and back down to one 
and this would be at the end and then use size scale will be true so it's more noticeable and then finally let's go into general and here right now we only have 10 particles max let's make it 35 now we can take that emitter and move it into position which is right here as you can see it's lined up so let's save build and play test so it's not bad looking but obviously you're going to need to experiment with this and try different combinations, different scales, sizing scale, color scale, velocity, the shape, the box shape, number of particles. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do to try to make this look better. The next trick that I'm going to show you is that when you open up the editor, you can actually open a map and it's called particle examples. So you can actually open this map in the editor and they've done a whole bunch of examples here. So you can just take the time and look at each one of these, click on the properties and then study all of the properties. If you go to Admitter, you can study all of these properties here to see how they do these effects. So there's beams, particles, and I don't know what that is but there's a lot of things for you to explore here as well.